In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. I say this every year. This is a beautiful night, a holy night. One of those thin places, one of my favorite, if not my favorite service of the year. Uh, but it's an incredibly tricky service to preach. One of the more dangerous things entering into something so beautiful uh, where really all you can do is mess it up. The only more dangerous, I think, than preaching uh, a long sermon on, on Christmas Eve after people have been celebrating, it's late into the night, uh, is a very technical theological one. So here I go. <laughs> We were uh, celebrating one of our uh, many occasions over the last week of the school, uh, which we're celebrating Christmas with the children, and I uh, got up to pray, and I read the prayer, and I realized how much it leaves unexplained. It was a prayer about uh, thanking God for sending His Son into the world so that we would all live in peace, uh, and for the salvation of the world, and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, but to a kid, I can't imagine, to an adult... Uh, to an adult priest, I can't imagine that really makes sense. How does this little child come into the world and bring peace when we flip on the news and we see things like Aleppo and all of the things that have gone on over the last 2,000 years? And how does this little child save the whole world? We've kind of fast-forwarded the story, uh, and I think that the child comes full of hope, the hope of the world. The hope that the more that we open ourselves to, the more light that comes into us, the more we spread that light, the more peace that can be born in the world. And I think that that child grew to represent and become uh, the saving of the world. But I don't think that child itself, I mean, fast forward to the story. But I do think when we miss the point of Christmas, we miss a theological truth that I think gives us the ability to walk each day of our lives with the knowledge that God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. And when I think about what Christmas means, I think of one of the, my favorite quotes. Uh, it's a, a Teddy Roosevelt quote. Uh, and I'm going to read it uh, and then tell you why I think this is exactly what Christmas means. It is not the critic who counts. <clears throat> Not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcut. Who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions? Who spends himself in a worthy cause? Who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement? And who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory or defeat. <clears throat> I think before this night ever happened, before we had that moment where God entered fully into human creation, we had a God who loved us, who gave us the freedom to live uh, as, as we choose to choose God or choose other, and we had so many stories of God being disappointed. But God said, you know, the only way, the only way to fully reveal God to humanity and humanity to God is to get into the arena. And not in the expensive seats, not even in the cheap seats. In the bowels. A place where a scared, terrified man uh, is about to risk his life, probably lose his life. In the bowels of the human condition. In a scared teenage girl and a rejected Beyonce, whose family can find no place for them, the bowels of the stable, the bowels of humanity where shepherds, outcasts, <coughs> are cold and tired and sleeping with the sheep. That's entering the arena. Christmas is about the fact that God knew in order for God to fully understand humanity, to fully 
walk, every step that we walk, and for us to truly understand God's love and God's presence with us, God had to enter the arena with dust in his face and fully experience what it is. The news of a bad diagnosis, the heartbreak of losing somebody, the joy of finding something amazing in somebody else, the experience of being born the witnessing of a new child coming into the world. In order for God to truly <coughs> create a place where there is nothing that separates us from God, God had to enter the arena, had to come fully into our lives. So this night, it's not just about a, a peace that we can obtain. It's not just about the fact that we will get to the rest of the story when Jesus grows and gives his life for us and that tomb is empty. But this is the night where we know God loved us enough to enter the arena. To say every part of your life matters. Part that you hide from your neighbors and your friends. Part that you're proud of and parts that you're not. <clears throat> the wonderful joy that you're celebrating or maybe the void that you take out of this place with you. God is there. God has entered the arena of your life. Of all life. The world will never be the same. God walks with us. Emmanuel. God is with us. So when we light the candles, when we fill this place with those little flames, remember that that light not only shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it, but that God walks with you down to the arena, the highest place you've ever climbed, the lowest place you've ever found. God came as a child. To the Jew, though, God is always with you.